my friends welcome back to my channel and uh, part two of uh, Mariposa coloring page available in my Etsy shop we're gonna work on her hair today and um, I decided to go ahead and use the um, the Karen Dash pencils for her hair so let's get started I'm gonna try really hard not to get out of frame today <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see what happens actually you know what I should do I should put a little I'm gonna put a little thingy there and then that way I know if I go down below those marks I'm gonna be out of frame <laughs> okay so I have pulled out a few pencils this is oh I hate it when I cover up and I can't see what the name of the pencil is hang on I think it's brown over 10%. La -dee -da. Yeah, it's not bad. Brown oak. Okay, so I think this is brown ochre 10%. Yes, it is. And then this is um, brown ochre 50%. And then we have dark flesh, black, and sepia. All right, so I'm gonna start with the two lightest colors. And I'm gonna use the brown ochre 10% and I'm gonna put some down in some of these hairs that I really want to stick out. It's funny. I'm not gonna be able to do that. Okay, um, it's funny how uh, really because these are harder, I really need a sharper point. So I just pulled out some sandpaper to sharpen this because um, my pencil is in this ex an extender that won't go into my electric sharpener. So. Sometimes just a piece of sandpaper works for getting that nice sharp point. When we, uh, after we finish getting the hat on, I'll um, come back in with a few more random hairs to go on top of the hat. some of these two. I may have to wait and do some of that after I get the background in a little bit better. Okay, next, brown ochre 50%. So I'm just going to put this um, kind of in the center of each little clump of hair, little section of hair.
debating on whether I want, I don't want this to really be red. I don't want red hair. I want brown hair. Um, the dark flesh, <clears throat> I think will add some warm tones to it that I'm going to want. Um, so let's go with sepia. And we'll just add the dark flesh as needed. You know, I'm seeing this little bit right here that I missed. So a little bit more of this burnt ochre, 50% right up top. Okay, so now... There's this little bit here that's a little bit too weird and clumpy, so I'm just going to break some of this up. I like working each little kind of clump of hair from the bottom in and from the top down so that you get your lightest pencil stroke in the center of the clump of hair. Because as you're flicking, you're, you're pulling your pencil kind of up off the paper so it, it keeps your... Um, your stroke a little bit lighter. So it works, seems to work pretty well to do it this way.
think better to go over a section like here's a good example this is a good example so I had these loose hairs that were coming across here but in order not to um, cover them up I first tried to kind of go underneath it and on top of it and what wound up happening is that these two sections here looked different so better to go just ignore it go over the whole thing and then take a lighter color pencil and cr and recreate that little ra random strand then try and work around it and have the hair not look consistent if that makes sense i think it does all right now i'm trying to figure out how i want to do this because i do kind of want to have um, her back lit um, which means that I'm going to need a lot of light hair colors out here. I think once I get the background on, I'll come in with um, some white and do some bright lit hairs. So, so that was just me kind of talking, <laughs> thinking my thoughts out loud. So I don't think I have to worry too much about those light hairs yet. That was where I was going with that thought. These will all get done. almost almost decided to do the background first but changed my mind in the end When I'm here on the skin, I want to be really careful. I, if I go off, if, if I go onto the skin, I want to make sure my pencil is really sharp. That's not sharp enough. Because um, if I do do some loose hairs that go over the top of the skin, I want to make sure that those are um, really thin. Oh, and this right here. I think I added this yesterday. Yes, I did. I added this yesterday um, because I didn't like um, what I was seeing with the way that I had done the collarbone. Sorry, I'm going to pull some black out. Um, so I just added some, some hairs, some loose ones that are kind of coming out of her hairdo there and um, just kind of softened that collarbone line a little bit, which I like a lot better. So I'm gonna sharpen my sepia again. And while I have it nice and sharp, I'm just gonna throw a few. Don't be afraid to add hairs where there aren't hairs in a picture um, because that helps, <clears throat> that helps to add to the, the realism of 
the hair. Really, in all actuality, I probably should <clears throat> should have done the shirt first. Um, but I don't know what color I want to make it. Um, in my original painting, she's wearing a black hat and a black shirt. But um, I'm I, I I'm I really like the way gray and green look together. And the background of this piece is going to be green. Big surprise, right? <laughs> I tend to do green backgrounds, I think, more than any other color. Um, and so I'm thinking I might want to do her shirt gray. I might want to do her shirt gray. So, but I'm not positive. So in the meantime, while I do the rest and figure this out. I'll um, I'll just add any more hairs that I want at the end of the page. Yeah, let's keep, we'll, we'll do it this way. I'll we'll continue in the vein I've been doing and we'll, we'll come back to this side after we get this color on here. Turn your pencil if you need to, to keep the sharpest point you can. That'll save you from having to put it in the sharpener quite so often. Debating on whether that's hair or feather. I can't remember. I think I'll leave it like that. this out of the um actually you know what I think I'll do that's just for ease of for ease of video I think I will pull out my next I have a I have another one of these so we'll just pull that out so that I'm not battling with stuff on camera that's better okay I'm gonna put some Now back to 
the sepia. all pretty dark in here however there is some light shining through her hair so I think I'm going to put some of this um, burnt ochre 50 percent kind of around here And then maybe, I wonder if dark, I'm gonna try the dark flesh because often when light is hitting brown hair, um, it turns, it, you know, the red tones come out in it. I know mine does for sure. and then maybe we'll just do black in here. Okay, back to sepia. Nope, sorry, grabbed the wrong one. All right, let's try some of this dark flesh. Yep, I'm gonna like that. That warms up her brunette hair.
little bit of that on top of these highlights so that they're not quite as white. You can always add some more back in. I'm really feeling the urge to break out the blender because I'm, I don't like the graininess that I'm getting here with these pencils. So, I'm gonna do that and see what happens. like magic it just takes away all that graininess go with the the, uh, the direction of the hair Okay, let's add some of that in and then we on this side and then we will do the black. okay with going over the um, highlight bits because they're still going to stay light but they're going to take on kind of a warm tone from this pencil Just to get some black in here now. This is not black. This is black.
to something up here is not right and I'm not sure if that's just the uh, um, the, the forehead needs some more I don't know what I did with my um, hang on So I'm going to break out some burnt ochre, 50%. Okay, and now uh, I'm going to sharpen my sepia. do these hairs a little bit better. Here, I'm going to go ahead and add the darker bits underneath all of these flowers. You know what else is bugging me? I haven't done her eyebrows yet. So, to keep from forgetting, I'm going to do them right now. Carrying on the black. Oops. <laughs> Got carried away there.
I'm gonna try some more uh, dark flesh down here. And maybe some um, burnt ochre, fifty percent. Sharpen the dark flesh nice and sharp, and start adding some hairs up on her skin here. These I'm gonna add a few more, but I don't want to do that till I get the color on her on her shirt or dress. Um, I think. I think I'm, I'm good with it for now. Um, I can always come back and add more. Yeah, I think I'm going to I'm going to stop on the hair for now. Um just in the interest of getting some more stuff done, I think I'm going to do the hat. Um I do want it to I do want her hat to be black. I want her necklace to be black. Actually, I could do that right now too. Let's do that. Um, the rope on her necklace. So we want to leave a little bit of um, highlight down the center. I'm going to put gray on there. Um, how about silver gray? And I do have to decide 
how, whoops, how do I want to, that might be too much, how I want to, um, what I want to do about her pendant. Um, I could color it gold. Um, I could do gold leaf. I might color it gold, but I don't think I'm ready to do that yet. Um, I'm just going to kind of work on some stuff here that's bothering me. So just going to make this line a little bit more defined on her finger, under her finger. I don't know. I look like I went a little crazy with my color, my colors <laughs> around her finger fingertips here. I got a little I don't know, you know how when you um, there's a part that you're not that you don't love to do maybe you rush through it faster than you should because you just want to get it over with and then you regret it because it's obvious that you didn't take your time <laughs> to do it right. I think that's what this is right here for me. I need to... I don't know. I need to suck it up and do it right. And I don't know. You know what? I'm going to add some more pink. Um, this pink, uh, the anthro pink. I'm going to add a little bit of that to her French manicure. Let's do, um, let's do the hat. Now here's the, in the medium version of this page, um, the medium grayscale, her hat is black um, and, her, and her, um, her dress is black. Um, for the light version, I lightened that hat up quite a bit so that if you wanted to do a green felt hat or a purple, you know, you could do whatever color hat you wanted with the, with the grayscale being lighter. Um, I do think that I want it black. Do I, if I do this, I don't think I want to do a green hat. No, I think I want to do a black hat. So, um, boy, I'm tempted to just break out my Prisma black instead of using the Curran Dash. You know what? I'm going to. I'm just going to use my Prism Black. If you, you know, use whatever black you have. It's, uh... I'm just, you know, something else I could maybe do is, um... Oil... Oil, uh... Oil pastels in black. That's kind of tempting too. That would go a lot faster. Hmm. All right, well, to start with, I'll do the black in pencil in here. I just love black on pages. Um, it just gives that nice, really, depth so that when you're looking at the page, you've got high contrast between lights and darks. This 
is probably not anything you guys need to watch, but. So all I'm doing is filling in. So if you're, um, if you get bored, just, you can just fast forward the video. I am really considering though using the oil pet the black a black oil pastel to fill in the large portions of the hat. Um, I, I'm getting confused as to when videos have come out because <laughs> I've got several recorded. Um, and ready to go, but all of them are going to kind of come out at different times, depending on when my coloring pages are ready to go on to Etsy and um, all that. So if you're ever watching the videos and I'm talking about something and then I'm talking about it like I'm using it for the first time, <laughs> it's because the videos when I recorded them are different than when they got put up on YouTube. I have been using that oil pastel um, technique with the Gamsol. I think this video will come on before <laughs> the one where I where I show you how I paint with it. I've done one already where I kind of used my fingers to rub the oil pastel in. And, um, and then I've also done one that's not out yet where I paint the whole thing with Gamsol. <clears throat> All right, so... Here's where this feather is. And part of me is feeling like I want to, if I am gonna use the oil pastels, which I'll have to just test on a little area. Um, I kind of rather put that close to the feather because then I feel like because they've been thinned with the, with the um, odorless mineral spirits, the fluffy part of the feather might go over the top better than if I go straight opaque black here. So let me finish doing these little bits here. And then we'll break that out and test and see if I get good coverage. If I get good coverage and it looks black enough, maybe I'll do that. All right. Um, I'll turn the camera off. I'll get the stuff out and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have a scrap um, piece of paper. It's not my, <laughs> it's not my real page. I have this scrap one where I, I printed it and the, um, the printing didn't come out very good. So I, I don't know why I tore it in half, I did. But anyway, I, 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 I retrieved the piece out of the garbage. Um, if you're ever going to try a new technique or something that you're not positive of how it's going to um, come out, I would always recommend just doing a little test, um, you know, on a scrap piece of paper before you actually do it on your page because you'll be really sad if you do it on your page and you don't like the results. So I have some Gamsol in here. I have put the, the tiniest little bit in here. Um, I always think, st you know, use the least amount that you can use. Um, because it's kind of hard to save it and you don't want to waste. So um, I've literally dipped it into the, um, the thingy and now I'm, um, I'm gonna paint right on here. And let's see how this covers. Oh, that covers really well.
Okay, so let's just say I can't get all the way to the super duper edge like I want. If I come in with the pencil. that'll give me the look that I want and if I have some pencil on here already like those areas that I filled in does it look similar does it Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and use that. Um, it will go a lot faster and make me happy. <laughs> I could probably get away with one coat of this as opposed to having to do the black several times you know when you're trying to get a good black so often you have to put it on there a couple of times and of course I didn't I didn't outline I think I'll just stop there and then fill that in if I need to I don't want to Really, this stuff has become some of my favorite stuff to use because it doesn't buckle. It doesn't buckle the paper. So it's like uh, you get the best of, of both worlds with regards to the ease and the speed of using water media. But... Um, you know, your pages don't buckle like they do with what, when you use water, which I love. And when it's um, thinned out like this <clears throat> with the odorless mineral spirits, it doesn't have that heavy, sticky residue that, um, that you get when you put them on real thick, um, like with your finger, like we did on that other video. So when the horse video comes out and I'm and I'm doing this technique for the first time, don't be confused because I filmed it first. Yeah, I, I really like the black hat. This is taking so much less time than if I had done this all in colored pencil. And now, of course, I'm like, I need all the colors. When I first bought my oil pastels, I only bought the 48 because I wasn't sure if I would like them. And they have a 72 in the same brand, but then I'm like, yeah, but if you buy those, then you're going to have all kinds of duplicates. So I just don't think I can justify 
but I did learn you can blend. You can make your own colors by bl by putting down several colors and just blending them together. It's like mixing paint. Hopefully my feather will, my pencil around the feather will feather on there nicely. <laughs> All right, I can see there's just this, one, this area here where I feel like I want a little bit more. All that done. All right. So we have uh, the background to do, which, by the way, I'm probably going to use that same technique for the background. <laughs> um, yep, I think I am. So I think I will stop this video here and um, we'll do the butterflies and the flowers in another video maybe the same one as the background I'm not I'm not sure you know it depends on timing I have um, one video coming up that went way over time and I I kind of prefer sh and I think you guys too um, slightly shorter videos so um, yeah I think I'm going to call that hair finished until we get a little bit more of the page done so that'll be it until I see you guys on the next video take care of yourselves take care of each other happy coloring bye okay I have one quick little video edit um, I did discover um, that even when I use the um, mineral spirits, it does um, transfer off onto your fingers a little bit um, after it's done. So be sure that when you're, if you're going to use this, be sure to go in with um, like maybe a Kleenex or something and just take off as much of the ex excess as you can. Um, this can be solved by spraying with um, a matte finish spray like I've done before. Um, with some of the colors, it's not as much of an issue, but I think with black, you do want to be um, careful. Um, I didn't want you guys to do this and then find that. Um, so see, after I've wiped it off with my fingers, it doesn't, um, it doesn't pull off, you know, anywhere near um, like it did before. So um, just a little bit of a Kleenex, you know, or, or something and just kind of rub off any extra that's left on there. And you should be good to go to finish um, your page without any smudging. So that's all. Just wanted to make sure you guys um, knew that. <laughs> and, uh, and that's it. I'll see you next time.